Hello and welcome to this walkthrough of the new web search tool available within Nowsys Skillkit. This tool allows for you to retrieve information from the web, allowing for you to generate content using the latest information um, that's available on the internet. This is really helpful in examples such as the one you're seeing today, where we're generating travel guidance for a particular employee traveling internationally for work. Now, this is really helpful because travel advisories change all the time, even day by day. So it's very difficult to maintain a knowledge article, for example, with the latest information. So you might as well use this web search tool to get the latest. Now, this capability does rely on third party providers to provide some of the functionality. So first, we'll need for you to go out and connect your ServiceNow instance to those external services by providing API keys for each one. Now, to do so, you need to go out and go into the connection and credential aliases table and find the relevant APIs you will be using. Now, there's two methods of performing web search. There's that of AI answers, which is similar to when you type into Google, you get the AI generated response. That's what that service is and it's provided by the Google Gemini or Perplexity. However, if you're using the search and scrape method, you'll be using a combination of either uh, Microsoft Bing, Google Search, in conjunction with either Scraping Bee or Crawlbase. Now, whichever service you use in this scenario, you will have to go and get an API key and get configure a particular license but once you have the API key, what you can do is go into the API record, click on the connection record, go into the credential itself, and replace this field here with your API key. You then save this record and then go to the one extend capabilities table. This is where we just tell the system which service you're actually using to perform this functionality. Now, as mentioned, we'll be using the search and scrape methodology. So we need to go to this one extend capability for web search APIs. Click on one extend definition configs, and you should see the options down here. Now we'll be using Google search today. So we need to make sure that default is set to true for Google search. And this just tells the system who will be the provider for the service. Now, because we're doing search and scrape, with configured search, we now need to let the system know who will be providing the web scraping service, which in this scenario will be scraping B. So again, we set the value to be true. We then return to Nalsa's skill kit and click on tool editor. We add a new tool, which is of type web search. We then give the tool a name lay this information. We then select the search result type, where today we're going to be doing searching and scraping. We add in our search query, where we're going to ask for, hey, provide me travel advisory for the input destination type. We select the number of results that are returned from the uh, search component. We then can also provide a certain sites or domains that we want to perform this search upon. Now, because we're getting travel advisory guidance, we probably only want to make sure that we get information from trusted sources, such as the CDC website and the US state travel advisory website as well. So we're going to limit the search to those. This country field determines where that search is coming from. So we're going to say that we're in the United States. And then we can define the maximum number of tokens that will be used. So we're going to say 300. We then go through next. Tool conditions allows for you to define when you should run this tool. Uh, you can write a script that says potentially, hey, if we have an up-to-date knowledge article on this already, maybe don't reach out to those APIs just because it might consume X number of um, tokens and cost you money. So you might not always want to run it. 
but in an aisle scenario, we'll always need this to provide the service. We then add the tool and return back to the prompt editor. Now, in here, we want to add in a resources section and we're going to insert inputs, click on our tool and make sure that we return the response. Now, this is a response from that the final API in the step. If we select provider, we just get information on which LLM use it or any error statuses, which we don't really want. We then save. And if we run the test with the destination being Kenya, and now we've re received the results. So if we scroll down, so it'll be in JSON view, so let's change its text view. This is what is displayed to the user. If we click on grounded prompt and scroll down, we can see what the response from the API services was. As you can see, it's quite a bit. <laughs> it's a bit overwhelming, but luckily we have an LLM to process that for us. And lastly, we have the tools tab where we can actually select a particular tool and see what the response was. So this is where you can just make sure that the potentially the API is working and what is actually being returned for each user. We then can also click on request and see what the actual request out to those particular services was um, just to verify that. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.